Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you the five different methods on how to remove a stuck rotor. I did run into quite a problem with the dodge, so I'll go through the basic methods first, then working up to harder methods using more tools. This applies to rotor setups where the rotor and hubs are separate assemblies. There will be two different rotor designs. The most common is the version with the braking surface only on the outside. Next, which you'll see on the rear of the truck, is a version where it also includes the braking surface on the inside for your parking brake. This version with the added braking surface can cause more problems. Typically what happens is the rotor and hub will form surface rust on the mounting faces and that bonds the two components together. The bore on the rotor can also become locked in where it sits onto the hub. Starting with method number one. Using a ball peen hammer, this can be any size, however a medium sized version would be the safest choice, hit between the wheel stud locations. A medium sized version will have enough weight and will comfortably fit between the wheel studs. Do not hit on the outside area as you can damage the rotor. These rotors are being replaced so I'm not too worried about damaging them. You can install the lug nuts or rubber hoses over the wheel studs to protect them if you wish. A few hits should be able to break it loose. Sometimes you can apply penetrating oil around the wheel stud locations and the bore of the rotor. Even letting the oil soak overnight may also help break up any corrosion. Just be sure that oil is washed away when either installing new rotors or on the existing rotors so it doesn't damage the braking surface. You'll notice right away when the rotor breaks free and then you can finally remove it. Next is moving on to method number two. This applies to the rotors equipped with the parking brake assembly and this is located on the rear of the vehicle. You should see a parking brake cable entering the brake dust shield on the rear. Locating the rubber access cover, remove that and then using a standard screwdriver or brake tool you'll need to back off the shoes on the inside. Depending on the vehicle this may turn in different directions for each side. With this dodge this wasn't the case. One side is located at the top and the other is located at the bottom. Closing up the shoes will allow the rotor to be removed if there is a lip on the inside braking surface. You should be able to rotate the wheel freely. If not, then the pads could be engaged, something is binding up, or the pads are rusted to the braking surface of the rotor. And here's a view from the front side when the rotor has been removed. If required, you may still need to hit the rotor between the wheel stud locations, just like in method number one. Method number three. Similar type of an idea to a puller, but if you don't have a puller, using the caliper carrier mounting points, find suitable bolts with washers and nuts. This will help push against the rotor. If you are keeping the rotor, I would recommend putting a barrier in between the bolt and rotor so it's not marring the surface, causing any issues. For this, I have installed the lug nuts as a safety. My chest is close to the rotor and I didn't want it abruptly breaking loose and hitting me in the chest. Use both. While there is quite a bit of pressure on this assembly when braking, it's more of a rotational direction and being that these are typically a cast design, don't get carried away as you may crack and break these mounting points. A hammer can also be used for added force between the wheel stud locations. Method number four. After the first two methods have been used, next is using a puller. A puller can also be used on rotors without a parking brake assembly as well. I was only able to rotate the wheel a small amount not a full revolution which means something is binding up in behind. You'll need a large enough puller set for this. There are various types available along with the two and three jaw versions. There should be an indentation on the center of the hub for the cone on the center bolt to lock into. Lock the jaws on the outside edge of the rotor. It's best to go on the back side of the rotor if possible. Here I wasn't able to do that. It's important to apply oil to the threads of the center bolt then tighten the puller. If it doesn't come off when tightening, then hit the center bolt of the puller with a hammer. These rotors are being replaced, so I'm not too worried about damaging them. Therefore, I am trying to hit the rotor on the back side with the pressure of the puller. This will help assist it off. Tighten the puller when needed, so it applies constant force. Finally, after it was dark, I finally got that rotor off. In this situation, the parking brake shoes were actually separated from the frames, and the shoes jammed up on top of each other, not allowing me to remove the rotor easily. If you do notice the puller pulling off to one side, that is due to a worn cone at the end of the center bolt. I ended up cutting a new tip on the lathe to prevent it from wandering. Finally, method number five. This is after at least trying the first two methods. Cutting off the mounting pins for the shoes which will be visible on the mounting plate from the rear. 
you can either drill them or grind them off using a carbide burr bit. With the mounting pins disconnected, while all the hardware is still in place, the pads can have some movement and collapse slightly. Typically I like to avoid any heat so you don't risk damaging the bearing assembly. In a worst case scenario, if all else fails, you can cut the mounting plates. Just make sure new ones are available to be purchased for your vehicle. Do you have any tips on how to remove a stuck rotor? Please be sure to share it in the comments below. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to follow my social media pages such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to keep up to date with my latest projects. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.